Hello community! Today we're gonna build the best possible AI agent for your system. So autonomous AI agent, we look now at their current development or their current performance limitation at mid to end April 2024. We're gonna look at here at a reproducible web environment designed to develop and test here our autonomous AI agent. And we check here the efficiency of tool-based selection. Let's start here. The first publication is here from Carnegie Mellon University, April 16, 2024. They built here a reproducible web environment for building autonomous agent. And you think, why is this necessary? Well, they found out that solving complex tasks is challenging. And their best GPT-4 based agent only achieves an end-to-end -end task success rate of 14%. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, hey, wait a minute, my rack system is 95%, 98%. But what they have done is something unfair. They evaluated those for their functional correctness of task completion. And this is a reproducible system. You can run here all your rack system. It's open source. Go there, put in your rack system, and you will be amazed, by the way. Okay, so if we go now with this insight from Carnegie Mellon University, from the researcher over there, functional correctness of your AI agent, 14%, you know, we have to do some work. Yeah. A standalone self hostable web environment for building autonomous agent. You have web application on the domains, then you have some tool sites, a tool you want to use, and then you have some knowledge resources from Wikipedia to your company specific PDF for internal documents. Those are your environment data, and then you have an AI action, agent that takes action and feedback, and you understand it here. Let me give you a simple example here from the publication. Task is create an efficient itinerary to visit all of Pittsburgh art museums with minimal driving distance starting for a particular location and lock this to my repo. You see, it goes here to Wikipedia, open street map, calculation, final result, done. Interestingly, what they did is they say, hey, we want an intent analysis. We want to understand what does the user want with its query? What is the intention? If we understand the intention, we can build here an optimized agent environment with specific tools. We optimize here the tool set and they built 241 templates for more than 800 instantiated intents. And they did this with here classification for information seeking, site navigation here, content and configuration operation, and it's an interesting study I would recommend. So intent analysis with 241 templates where human-machine interaction took place, and they found here this is the best way to do the specific job. However, if you are Microsoft, you have a different approach. April 24, 2024, get Intent-based tool selection. So we are exactly on the same topic, different corporation. What they say here, we want to identify the user intent. What does it want from the system? The same idea, we want to reduce here the tool set for a particular task. And we simply do this by testing out here on a massive parallel system with more than 100 GPT-4 turbo machines. Now imagine, at breakfast, you say, hey, Siri, spin up 100 GPT-4 turbo machines in the cloud because I want to do some experimentation later on. Yes, yes, I'm jealous. But anyway, what did they find out with their massive parallel co-pilot platform implementation? Now, they had toolkit. You notice this is the API's full toolkit set that they operated with and they say how we do it today. So if the user comes in and says, show me the airplanes at a special location in Florida on a special date and give me two satellite images. Okay, so GPT-4 goes and says, okay, this is my tool set. Now Microsoft tells us that they load up databases. Okay, beautiful. 
And then they make another call with their complete tool set, okay? And then they start to filter here for a specific location and another call to filter for specific dates. So you see we have more or less a single tool every time we go. Well, yeah, normal people like I, we do not have massive parallel GPT-4 machines clusters up and running, but hey, Microsoft says, hey, no problem. With my massive parallel cluster and my Gecopt, I get now the intent of the user. What does the user want here? Then I choose based on my training that I select now from my available API selection, the map, the data, and the SQL. And only with this limited set, I load the database. And now I do here a step where I have a parallel optimization and I filter for location and dates in one step. Well, of course, you have the infrastructure for this. So you see the tool selection is now fewer steps because we do some multi-step or multi-tool processing within one step. Well, yeah, it depends on the hardware infrastructure. But anyway, so this is now the new insight from Microsoft. And you might say, great, so how does it increase the performance? And we have here, chain of thought zero shot, without this new, and with Gacopt. Few shot, without, and with Gacopt. React, without, and with, and React few shot, without, and with. And if you look at this, at the first performance parameter, you see the performance of Gacopt is not as good as without. Performance here, chain of thought few shot is 84%, with Gacopt, 83.1. React zero shot, 84, plus Gacopt, 83. React few shot, 84, with Gacopt, reduced to 84.1. And this goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and the same trend goes completely through the performance parameters. So we lose performance of the system. And at this time, I had to go back and say, hey, wait a minute, I, I don't get this. What is happening here? And then I understood it is about cost efficiency. Microsoft wants to help you to save money so that you have on your massive parallel system now of your co-pilot, you have to use less tokens and therefore you pay less tokens per task. And now since the task can be performed on this beautiful multi-parallel machine in parallel, you go from 23,000 tokens to 18,000 tokens or from 25,000 tokens to under 20,000 tokens. So according to Microsoft, now this system is cheaper. To remember the other system was a one GPT-4 turbo machine. Now we have here massive parallel GPT-4 infrastructure, but the amount of tokens has been reduced. Thank you, Microsoft. Let me end with something real gorgeous. And this is from Cohere. And yes, it has an MIT license. It is open source, but I'm going to show you. And I really like this. You know Cohere. We have the command R plus system. You know Coral. This is Cohere Coral. Cohere Coral is grounded. You can do a web search. You have your files, your PDF, your TXT. Remember, maximum 20 megabytes. You can upload this, beautiful. You can just chat, English, multilingual, co-generation. You can do your web search, your topic learning, your research, or you analyze some files that you upload. This is the classical Cohere Coral that we know and that we love and that is very functional. But now we're gonna get take the next step. And now we have something new because we have now an open source toolkit available to us for free. So this is now a collection of pre-built components enabling us, user, coder, to quickly build and deploy a RAG application. Well, of course, all these tools that we get for free are specific to the Cohere platform, specific to the Cohere LLMs, optimized for the Cohere embeddings and optimized for the Cohere re-ranker systems. But if you decide you want to go with Cohere, you don't have to code your rack system manually. Cohere gives you the optimal, the best coded tools 
to do your programming, your API or your app development. So we have now a collection of modular components and pre-built apps on the Cohere platform. But hey, if you open up the files and you want to understand how does the code look from the best expert in the field, maybe you just take a sneak preview and you see, ah, oh, that's the way they code this. Just to give you an idea. So, beautiful, new open source toolkit. Whatever you do, you have the database, how you upload PDF, if you have a retriever, if you have your re-ranking, whatever, you go here, either the Cohere platform or the AWS HMaker, or you go to Asia, or you go here to Bedrock. They have done it all for you. This is a complete, ready-to-use tool set that you can use and build your perfect rack system for your company, for your private data, for whatever you want to build. Fast tools. Yeah, here, simply from the playground. If you just want to chat, or if you want to chat with Wikipedia, or if you want to chat with your documents, with your PDF, with your text file, whatever, as simple as clicking on the tools, integrating, activating and integrating the tool here in your process. Either if you, you have to pay for Azure, this is a one-click application. So if you click here in the GitHub repo, you can deploy it in Asia, on Azure, or you go and say, hey, I want to build and run it locally on my compute infrastructure in my company, at my home. They give you here a perfect instruction set how to deploy it locally. They show you here exactly step by step what you have to do. They also have here notebooks that tell you exactly here how it is done. So this is a very valuable resource of code if you want to build now and end of April 2024, the perfect rack system for your application. So here you have it, Cohere AI, Cohere Toolkit, pre-built components, open source, MIT license, enabling all of us to quickly build and deploy RAG application optimized for all the Cohere elements on the Cohere platform. What a great idea. This really helps a lot if you have to spin up a new rack within days. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something helpful. It would be great to see you in my next video.